Hey guys, JDR Exospace here. If you've been watching my channel, then you know I take a particular interest in trying to highlight people that may be legitimate whistleblowers. And while I usually try not to give too much daylight to those people that are just attention seekers, when they appear on the same stage as people that I have highlighted on this channel as whistleblowers, I feel like I have to point out why I don't feel like they're legitimate. And that brings us to one Mr. Eric Hecker. Now, if you've already seen Dr. Stephen Greer's public disclosure event about a month ago, then you may have already heard of this guy. And to be fair, his portion of this disclosure event was pretty short, but I'm gonna be playing a brief clip of him talking, I'm gonna dissect it, and then we're gonna do an even deeper dive into some of the evidence that he claims to have and see if this guy's legitimate or not. Hello, everybody. Ladies, gentlemen, members of the press. Uh, I'm very happy that you're giving me this attention and this information attention because it needs to get out to the world. Already happy to get attention. I will start uh, since we have to be brief. I have already given all pertinent information and supporting documentation to the Senate Intelligence Committee and Arrow. They informed me that all of my information will be recorded for public record and shared with Congress. It is that important. In 2010, I was selected to go down to the South Pole Station in Antarctica for an entire year by Raytheon Polar Services as an employee of a third-party contractor for the National Science Foundation. I function in a dual-role capacity as a tradesman and a firefighter. My responsibilities were... Okay, so let's stop right there because I've already got red flags going off in my head. For one thing, the National Science Foundation. This isn't exactly a covert operation. The National Science Foundation funds just about every type of scientific research there is in the United States. From my time in undergrad and graduate school, if you got an NSF grant, you were in the money because you got your project funded. They fund everything from physics research to interplanetary research, gravitational waves. They fund everything, including the stuff I worked on as an undergrad, which is like dealing with frogs and atrazine. This isn't exactly some kind of black ops. So there's one. And two, this guy worked as a firefighter and tradesman. Keep that in mind because that's going to be important later. Required me to be more informed than most of my crew and offered me complete access to the facilities. Unfortunately, I got to stop there again. If this is some kind of top secret research facility, being a firefighter and a tradesman, it doesn't give you access to the entire facility without any kind of escort. That's ridiculous. What I learned from this unique experience needs to be shared with the entire world. The technology at the South Pole Station certainly can do what it is presented as its primary purposes, and unfortunately, much more. The Ice Cube Neutrino Detector is presented as a passive listening device for the purposes of the science as presented. But I'm going to skip right through the chase, folks. Uh, I have provided documentation that proves that the 5,160, what they call DOMs, that are embedded in the ice can actually transmit at 2,047 volts each. That gives us a long list of things to consider. It is effectively a multifaceted directed energy weapons platform that I will uh, list rapidly a few things that it can do. Okay, let me stop there again. First of all, it has to be stated, this guy does not have the kind of technical training, education that would allow him to even understand the technology that's present at this facility. And this is not even top secret stuff. What he's describing is located at an international research station in Antarctica. It's actually pretty well known as the South Pole Research Site. This is on the NSF webpage. It's not exactly a top secret site. They tell you exactly what they're researching here. They're just also doing something else. Again, something that he does not have any background in and he did not have top secret access to because this was not a top secret facility. Unfortunately, I have other bad news. The season that I was there, 2010 to 2011, we converted from uh, construction to operations and maintenance in both the elevated station and the detector array. Unfortunately, when they first fired it up, that was when we had the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. There was two incidental shots before they were able to target it correctly. This is an earthquake generating device as well. This is the weapons of war that we have to deal with now and what Raytheon's hiding. He is claiming that this is also, other than a neutrino observatory, this is also an earthquake generating device and Raytheon knows that this is an earthquake generating device and is using this as a weapon, a targeted weapon. That's the claim he's making here as well with no evidence. There's an ELF system at the South Pole Station that when I was arrived, I was told it was off, dismantled, and completely defunct. In my work, I will rapidly just tell you, I had to figure out the circuitry for certain other repairs, and I found that this system is in fact completely energized, up and running, and being utilized with the other systems for nefarious purposes as well. I'm sorry to keep interrupting this guy, but the claims that he's making are just on their face preposterous. This guy is just a tradesman. He happened to be working on some circuitry and he's making these wild claims about what all of the stuff actually powered and some of this was secret. And just because he didn't understand how the loads matched up, that means there was this completely hidden, entirely different research facility other than what they're actually there for. I mean, this is, uh Research observatory is uh, in what we call the clean air sector. I witnessed myself a very 
powerful green laser shooting out of the top of this facility into the cosmos. This, I believe, is a secondary form of long-range communications and or a defense system. I am not saying that we need to be scared of anything that's out there, but please understand the military industrial complex is happy to invest all of your money in alleviating their fears. He saw a laser beam, he saw a green laser, and he's speculating about what it is. Again, with zero evidence. He's claiming that he saw a green laser pointed up at the sky, and that means it was some kind of communication device? Come on, man. Like, you don't even have the technological background to be able to make an assessment of what these things are. And all you saw was a green light. That's it. You didn't see any craft. You didn't see any actual technology that you're claiming to see. You saw none of this stuff. You're just making speculation about what you think is happening in this facility based on nothing that you actually encountered. This is not a whistleblower, folks. Listen to what this guy is saying. And look at this illustration. What he's describing at the end of this just cable and wench system is sitting on top of a technology that is allowing us to communicate with an entire space fleet of people traveling all over the solar system, apparently. This guy is one level above the guy that you call to unclog your toilet and fix a broken light switch, and he claims to have had access to all these programs without any kind of escort, even though this isn't a top secret facility, and claims to be able to understand how this technology works and how it's communicating. A question of power comes into play for all of these facilities that are present. I assure you, I knew what was going on, I knew the load demands of the facility, and all of these new items exceed the demand for the systems that I was presented. I am doing due diligence and research. I believe there is either a secondary power supply there that is either nuclear that uh, was there prior to the start of the Antarctic Treaty, which prohibits such things, and or that there is some sort of exotic uh, power supply system there that just is not in the verbiage of the treaty, so it negates the responsibility to the parties involved. He did not see a nuclear reactor. He did not see this alternate power source that he claims he had. He is speculating about all of this based on this knowledge that he claims to have of the load, the electric load of this facility. That is it. I think that pretty much covers it for time. If anybody, if anybody wants to find out more, I have a website where all this information is at for brevity. I'll wrap it up, but you can go to deciphering.tv. I've documented all of this stuff. Well, wouldn't you know it? I did go to deciphering TV to take a look at his evidence. So let's take a look at what we found. Here's his home page where he has some tabs to healing, exploring Antarctica. Oh, something here about the order of light that looks legitimate. Let's see. The Twin Towers of Truth, Freedom of Speech and the Cold Hard Facts, Free Range with Gale from Gaia, Robert Earl White, Order of Light, Connecting the Dots. Sounds legitimate. But I'm far more interested in the documentation that he claims to have. And I actually found this here in the archives and what he claims to be evidence. So let's take a look. Now, just to save you guys some time, I actually did skim through some of these. Now, he claims to have participated in this thing called the Stargate Project, which is some kind of CIA, DIA uh, I don't know if it was a mind control experiment or not. I, I really don't know much about it. But he has these documents that he's obtained. I can only guess from Freedom of Information Act request showing that these programs exist. That's really not that crazy because we already know that the CIA has conducted mind control experiments for decades. That doesn't mean they ever found anything or they were ever successful. But we know that they tested LSD and mind control on many people. So he has some letters that he's found from that back in the 90s when he would have only been, I don't know, like in his 20s, early 20s. But I don't see anything on here yet about UAPs. Keep looking, keep looking. Stargate handed to the CIA. UFOs in Brookhaven National Labs. That was 1953. This guy wasn't even alive then, so that's hardly a whistleblower account. DOM document about high voltage supply and dividers. DARPA, 1999. Ooh, what's this? Classified UAP report? That's, we gotta click on that. That has to be where the secrets are. Let's go read document. Classified UAP report. Ooh, what's this? Office of the Director of National Intelligence. And right there at the top, classified as hell. That's how you know this is legitimate. So, oh my God, let's scroll through. June 26, 2021. Take a deep breath and relax. Uh, that's it. Well done. You've made it this far. I'm proud of you. As far as your tax dollars are concerned. Ah, you got me. That's not a classified document, Eric Hecker. Come on now. But just out of curiosity, let's read through some of this stuff and see what he's claiming to have knowledge of. On February 20th, 1954, President Eisenhower met with a delegation of ETs called the Orion Consortium at Edwards Air Force Base. By 1956, Eisenhower realized the ET Treaty was a deception. Mutilated animals were found across the United States. Citizen and children were missing en masse. NASA has always had two space programs. One, overt one covert its real mission was to be a u.s navy deep space galactic penetration organization 
Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo were all cover projects and test beds. NASA is also a cover for the secret space program. Anti-gravity propulsion was used in the LEM module for takeoff from the moon. Joint military, corporate, and ET bases on Mars and the moon exist under NSA, NRO, JIC, Aegis, read-only internet access. Reports that the MCC, a private mining concern, has implemented a slave labor force for high-tech production. Use in interstellar trade have been independently substantiated by the British Interplanetary Society and MI6. Odd that MI6, the uh, British spy agency, would just disclose this information. Military use only quantum access time travel and Tesla teleportation have existed since 1972. All branches of the U.S. military are in alignment with different ET groups for various technological projects. Anti-gravity unified field theory propulsion and magnetic field disruption has been implemented in various military applications since the late 1950s. Wow. The U.S. Navy has its own interstellar, intersolar system, space fleet, and space-based scalar particle beam weapons. Wow, we're all over the solar system, apparently. Interstellar space travel requires time travel and trans-dimensional navigational abilities that are now well known and understood. Psychotronic, scalar, plasma, and particle beam weaponry are utilized. Space stations and moon asteroid outposts are numerous. The U.S. Army and the NSA have an ET-derived quantum artificial intelligence interface that exists in hyperspace. <laughs> there exists over 200 deep underground military bases, DUMS, funny acronym, in the United States alone and 1,400 worldwide with some under the seafloor all connected by vacuum tube maglev trains capable of Mach 2 performance. Cattle mutilations and human military abductions are illegally implemented for gathering biological growth medium by the Orion Consortium Greys and Black Ops military personnel for creating hybrid clones at the Dulce New Mexico Dumps facility. I don't know, personally, it seems like a lot of resources just go out and abduct cattle. It's not like cattle are hard to come by, but okay, let's continue. The astral plane is where time and space do not really exist as we understand it here. This is really interesting. The congressional funded black budget is not the semi-official 50 billion but is closer to two trillion dollars per annum two trillion dollars per year completely off the books that the federal government is funding most races of star beings exist invisibly outside of our narrow range of light spectrum and five senses oh and he's got some images here of these uh spacecraft apparently look at that a secret space program oh look at this they have a lunar base he has a full diagram of this space of this base that's apparently on the moon. It must be on the dark side of the moon since we can't see it through telescopes. It's got this rendition of some kind of craft here. That's interesting. Spa whole space fleet here. It's even got a logo. They must have shit the bed when our galactic country cousins came calling with the big news. Hallelujah, Julia. Folks, these are the ramblings of a madman. And this is the part that is so frustrating when you're trying to cover any stories about UFOs. I don't even like to say that I believe or don't believe anybody because I don't want to at some point later on when new evidence comes out be proven to be a fool. But when you have people that seem to be legitimate military whistleblowers like Michael Herrera and DC Long and some of the other people I've covered and plan on covering, and then you put them on the same stage with someone like this that is clearly a lunatic, it undermines all credibility in any kind of UFO disclosure. Even in this press conference, Dr. Stephen Greer said, why is it taking so long? I've been doing this 30 years. Dr. Greer, this is exactly why you put people that are clearly out of their mind on the same stage as people who actually might have the credentials to have been in the places where they said they were and are not making these crazy extrapolations about things that they've seen or haven't seen. They're just relaying their story and describing how it's affected their lives. Meanwhile, you bring people like this on that have a website talking about the ramblings of space and time travel and all these intergalactic beings and these things that there's absolutely no possible way on Earth someone that is a plumber, a professional plumber, could have any idea or any special knowledge about. This is simply absurd. This is fundamentally the problem that I have with Dr. Stephen Greer. He's made a career out of portraying himself as this neutral observer who's just collecting all this intelligence about UFOs. Now, I do believe that there are some legitimate whistleblowers around him that have seen some things that are not easily explained, but he clearly is not someone that's doing his due diligence. I'm really disappointed with this, and you guys might even be upset with me for covering this video, but I don't want this to come across as I'm discrediting all whistleblowers. I focus specifically on whistleblowers in this channel because I do believe that brave military people on the inside coming forward is the only way we're ever going to get the bottom of the truth. This guy is definitely not one of those people. He just isn't. He, by his own definition on his own website, is a plumber, a tradesman. This is not somebody with top secret access. He never walked around a top secret facility in Antarctica with no escort, looking at all kinds of technology, allowing us to communicate with interstellar travelers. That did not happen. He was at an NSF funded research facility doing routine maintenance electrical work. That's it. 
Everything else that he's talked about since then is just pure extrapolation and pure nonsense. This guy doesn't deserve to be on the same stage as some of these other whistleblowers. And every time Dr. Stephen Greer brings somebody like this forward and muddies the waters, he's undermining his own credibility. If you want to be taken seriously, quit bringing people like this forward. They're clearly insane. And focus on the people whose credentials actually may have put them in places where they say they were. And I feel like I have an obligation to tell you guys the truth and call it as I see it to point out the legitimate people from the non-legitimate. This guy, definitely not legitimate. I don't like taking a 100% stance on any of this. This guy, very comfortable saying, I don't believe him, full of crap, and you shouldn't either. But that's all I have for you guys on this video. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do so, and I will catch you on the next one.